Welcome to Workshop Wednesday number three, a series which I'm thinking of renaming to Expensive Stuff Blows Up, which is maybe a bit more catchy, but definitely more accurate. So two weeks ago, it was the laser tube that went this week. Oh, it's this lump, which is the head of my laser extractor. So it won't spin up to more than about 10 RPM. So something is definitely wrong with it. So we're gonna get it apart, find a fix and get it going again so we can resume production. Hello, workshop Wednesday number three and another catastrophic fault. I'm having some bad luck at the moment. So this is the extractor uh, that draws the fumes away from a laser cutter. And basically you switch it on and what happens is the motor spins up to about 10 RPM and switches off. So I've connected up a multimeter and this is the power out the board. So first of all, I'm gonna check these two wires here to check that we've got mains voltage coming out and then basically we've got some DC voltage for a control element. So we're going to check those two elements and it should hopefully tell us what is going wrong. So this is the main side of the power supply, everything functioning correctly there. Now as a side note, this is my new multimeter, maybe the nicest one I've ever seen, but maybe that's just because I haven't seen a lot of multimeters. But it's got a voltage, you can actually select AC auto, so it auto selects the range. I'm about to test DC auto, so let's uh, fire it up and see what we get. Okay, so we're getting voltage out there, 6.97. So this has been sent to me from Boffa, Bofa, the manufacturer of the extractor, and they have actually had pretty good uh, customer service. They put me in touch with an engineer who sent me this troubleshooting guide. So I tested out the mains, tested out the DC voltage, which of course varies according to how fast you set the motor. And if you look at that top row, I've got mains voltage, I've got DC drive voltage, action, replace motor. Let's get on the phone and find out how much this is gonna cost me. We're uh, speaking earlier about the um, the extraction unit. Hello, sorry, I had a bit of an odyssey. My <laughs> multimeter had blown up as well. It's a day of broken things. Um, yes, so I've tested it out. I'm getting 242 volts on the uh, the the AC side, and I think it was like 6.9 maybe on the DC side. So it sounds like a broken motor report according to your spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any indication on price? Cheers, thanks, bye. Broken motor. This thing, turns out it's called a snail, and it's basically just the fan, the blower unit. So there's like a little turbine unit powered by the motor, draws the air through, pass it through two filters, broken motor, and Buffer International don't deal with the likes of me, so they've got to go through a distributor. So let's see uh, where we go. So it looks like I'm just be cutting ones and twos of things in the meantime, and uh, just clearing the smoke by hand and cleaning mirrors and lenses an awful lot, so nightmare. Shout out to Vodex for who are the UK distributor of Buffer equipment. They've sent me a replacement unit in record time, and this is what it looks like. Four hundred pounds later, um, we have a replacement snail, as they call it. It's got a built-in motor on the back. It should just be a plug and place, and satisfyingly, it's just a friction fit. There's no actual uh, hardware, so it should be quite a quick one. So let's get the top off. So if the maintenance guide is to be believed, this just pulls out, which always makes me nervous. Yes, it does. No telltale electrical burning smells. My high-tech diagnostics there. But basically, there's a fan on the end of a motor going through a little bit of a centrifugal turbine type affair. Right, replacement time, and hopefully this will work. It's certainly a lot cleaner. There 
no big differences. The motor, they seem to be the same shape and size. And we go. It butts up against a little gasket here, which, to be honest, isn't an amazing um, fit. There's a bit of a gap here, but I'm guessing when these screws go in, it will make the seal. I can certainly see a little bit of a gap around the edge. So we'll just pull that up as it lines up to some degree. We'll go with that. Plug her in. There we go. Line. We've got DC to DC, AC to AC. All's good there. And let's fire it up. Moment of truth. Plugged in, RCD installed. That's more like it. That's a lot more than 10 RPM. So we'll get the screws in, get the earth connected up, and we can start cutting again. So thanks for watching, and in next week's Workshop Wednesday, we're going to be putting the foundations in for the new Studio Come Workshop. See you then.